In this video, I'm going to talk about evaluating your year in voiceover. So as I'm recording this video, um, it is just towards the end of October. Uh, I've actually just turned 40 this week, hence this video uh, uploading slightly later. Um, so a lot of people would think, oh, OK, well, you've still got two full months of uh, 2021 to go. Why should you be thinking about evaluating your year and your progress to date? And my response to that, uh, the reason that I'm starting to uh, take stock about my year in voiceover to, to this date is because I know that if I wait um, until when everybody else is looking back at their year of 2021 and what their targets are going to be moving forward as a result, um, first of all, you uh, tend to become part of uh, mercy of the whole uh, a phenomenon that is kind of looking back and looking forward on what your your new year goals are going to be and everybody then has a huge push at the beginning of January to try and lead, lead the lives that they're supposed to lead and do the things that they're supposed to do and then they burn out for whatever various reasons by the middle of February or, or what have you and the site actually be a lot more selective in terms of the goals uh, that they have or a, a lot more um, a, a lot less ambitious and let things fall to the wayside it's a it's a part of a trend we all know it we see people going to the gym or doing more exercise because they feel that the, the, the new year is, is is part of them being a new them and although that whole mentality can sometimes when harnessed in the right way be really 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 useful it's also a kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy to a degree. Um, a lot of uh, courses, a lot of products are all sold on that kind of like basis. And a lot of us have felt that that exhaustion at the beginning of the year as well, of a new year, of not feeling as if it's quite going as it should be, etc, etc, etc. And so as an antidote to that, I think it is vitally important that you do evaluate what progress you have made during a calendar year or whatever period of time that you want to kind of set but you want to try and detach it as much as possible from that whole wider mechanism that's going on in the world people essentially selling you marketing stuff courses solutions ways through these things um so that you can I still have that process of evaluation, but not feel, oh my God, I've got to make the big change next month. You've still got two months to go to make 2021 even better and all of that kind of thing as well. But I would say you should start thinking about the groundwork of, of the stuff that you should be doing for next year now, when you've got two whole months to evaluate and see. So as an example, uh, with my kind of progress, it's lovely to be able to go back to my mood board. Uh, 2021 was the first time that I did a proper, proper uh, kind of in-depth mood, bo mood board of all of the different stuff that I wanted to achieve in my voiceover career and to see what stuff, uh, what things that I've progressed towards and what things that I've left to the side for various different reasons. So if I think back that obviously uh, one uh, big priority for me was my financial target, which I have set, I set at £100,000. Uh, I think I'm going to be very close to £100,000, but not quite there, which is crazy because it was one of those um, it was one of those goals that I kind of like set up on a pedestal as like, that sounds like a ridiculous figure. Let's see how far, uh, how close that I could get to it. And, and in actual fact, you know, I have made progress through doing lots of direct marketing, but also in terms of opening up various different other content that I create as well. Um, and part of my whole cycle has been, you know, investing in my marketing efforts by having consultations with Knowlton Marketing, for example, uh, to learn what like inbound marketing is, what outbound marketing is, realize that I am doing outbound marketing to a certain degree very, very well, but really kind of, of making my a sense of what social media is in terms of my business, how I can try and harness it in terms of my business, how I can make it work for me in terms of me as an individual and the platforms that I use. So that's been a really uh, educative experience. Um, 
Also in terms of, you know, some of the areas in voiceover that I've wanted to kind of like work in, I have had the opportunity to work in more games, which has been fantastic. And I would want to continue to build on that. Thanks to my wonderful voiceover agent, I've also been able to work with certain production companies who do game work specifically. Uh, and that's been fantastic. So being able to continue to build a relationship with my agent has led to those results. But there's more work that I know that I can do in order to really focus in on that sphere. Uh, and then also in terms of my coaching, not just in terms of my performance coaching, but in terms of other people that I've been working with, such as Knowlton, for example, or I'm working with other people on my SEO. So that's all fantastic to kind of like be able to categorize the things. Then, however, there are also certain aspects that I need to kind of go away and go, why did I put this to the side? So for me personally, like working on my American dialect, my American accent was just something something that is a priority to me. Um, I kind of put to the side. There was uh, training with certain people that I put to the side. Uh, getting a US agent. Yes, I actually am on the roster of two US agencies now, but um, what does that really mean in terms of a priority, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are lots of these things that actually, in the doing of them, I realized weren't actually that important, or it was because I saw other people doing them and then I got jealous and so I decided to work towards someone else's goals, having not thought it really through what it is that I want. Um, so I think that's a good as a kind of like a grounding exercise to see, to look back and see, okay, so what were the things that I were doing that really worked? Fantastic, brilliant. But also what are the things that I didn't do? Why didn't I see through certain bits of training? Why haven't I made more progress in certain things? One whole area that I wanted to really look at was, you know, working more in documentaries. And I've just not had the time to really kind of focus in on who that client is and how best to approach them in terms of work, whether I need to cultivate a showreel in order to be able to really sell uh, my skill set with that. So being then able to identify that that is something that I do want to focus on in 2022 moving forward um, is very important because then I can go, okay, so that's the big goal. Then what are the little actionable steps underneath that that I can really kind of focus on? And I think really to come back down to why I'm making this video now at the end of October as opposed to in, Dece in December is because now it's great to really have the time to explore, not and not to get started on my 2022 goals right now, although that could be an option as well, um, but to, to really have the time to go, okay, now is when I really do the research in terms of all of the little actionable steps that I need to take so that I know specifically what they are and what the framework is. And then once I've got a whole plan of all of my different set potential goals, possible goals for 2022 are, and I've actually worked out what all the different actionable steps are for all of those different goals, then I can actually have a bit more of a sense of prioritization. What do I want to prioritize? first. So obviously the direct marketing was a huge priority for me because I wanted to make sure that I could still maintain that at a certain level of 50 emails or, uh, a week uh, throughout the entire year, which I have managed to do and which has been very important to do. Um, so that's been able to be great. But now is are the ways that I could be using that time more effectively to pursue what my next targets are. So it's really just about Yes, taking stock, doing all of the kind of stuff that you would normally reserve until the end of the year, but also having this presence of mind in terms of really questioning, your, questioning, you know, if you had certain goals for this year in voiceover and you haven't achieved them, to ask yourself why. Um, and to be very open about that kind of like subject. Is it because it didn't really actually land as important to you? Is it because that life got in the way and that's completely justifiable? Life got in the way, other things got in the way, there were other kind of priorities. But then being able to bring all of this learning back into, okay, so what will your strategy be for 2022 or however you want to big it up, but to try and get away from this mindset of it's a kind of a boom or bust, has 2021 been a successful year or, you know, is 2022 going to be the big change in your voiceover career, you know, if only you get X, Y or Z kind of thing done. 
At the end of the day, we need to come back and scale things back into making sure that everything is a repetitive, consistent action with a kind of logic behind it. And that's what I want you to take away from this video. More than anything is just having that practical sense of really taking stock and then working on the things that you really need to distill and focus on and taking it from there. I hope this video has been of some use to you. Uh, wishing you a lovely week. If you did enjoy this in any way, shape or form, please do like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know if there's any other content that you want me to cover specifically in the channel as well. Thank you so much for your time uh, and I look forward to seeing you next week.